Hello and welcome to another one of my videos on reading the fluff from the codex. This time we're going to be focusing on the Tyranid versus Eldar and the Battle of Enyandin. At around the same time that one tendril of High Fleet Kraken was battling the Imperium on Icar IV, another was approaching Enyandin, one of the largest and most populous of the Eldar craft worlds. It would be here amidst eldritch architecture and within wraithbone halls that the most bloody conflict yet between Eldar and Tyranid would occur. Though Inyandin's rune-casting farseers had foreseen echoes of doom upon the future, the first proof of the Tyranid threat was reported by the craft world's rangers. A large tendril of High Fleet Kraken was headed directly towards Inyandin. It was too vast to outrun, and no mere battle line could contain it. Farseer Kelman, spiritual leader of Inyandin, declared that all would have to fight together if they were to stand a glimmer of hope. The entire craft world made ready for war. And in a sacred ritual, the avatar of the bloody-handed god was awakened. Even with every Eldar on Anyandin armed, the swarm that approached still vastly outnumbered the defenders. With a heavy heart, Kelman ordered the ghost warriors to be brought forth. In an act considered by many Eldar to be akin to tomb robbing, the spirit stones of Anyandin's ancestors were plucked from their resting places and placed in the wraithbone shells of war constructs to fight alongside their still living children. It is a testament to the terrible threat High Fleet Kraken posed that it has forced the Eldar to commit such a distasteful act. Without the Ghost Warriors, the Tyranid would have overwhelmed the craft world, but by waking them from death, Kelman risked the accumulated wisdom, culture, and racial memories of Inyandin itself. The Shadow Descends The first Tyranid swarms attacked Inyandin twenty days later. By then, the craft world had already been isolated for over a week by the shadow in the warp, and a dark malaise hung heavy in every Eldar heart. The Tyranids approach the giant craft world like a vast shoal of sharks, thousands of bioships attacking in unrelenting waves. In Yandin's formidable space fleet destroyed each wave in succession, but the ability of the craft world's forges to repair and replace lost spacecraft was outstripped by the viciousness of the deep space battles. The Eldar do not fight wars of attrition by choice. And slowly, craft by craft, the Eldar succumbed to the jaws of the great devourer, closed in on the craft world. Then Enyandin was hit by two huge attack waves in quick succession, swarms that dwarfed all of the other assaults combined, and the remaining flotilla of Eldar vessels was swept aside. The bloated, tyrannid craft blotted out the stars as they descended into their quarry, onto their quarry, vomiting forth armies of hideous creatures into Inyandin's unspoilt heavens. A horrific psychic scream resounded through the craft world's infrastructure as seething hordes of clawed, scuttling aliens were disgorged into its heart. Battles erupted all over Nyandin, the fighting bitter and close-ranged, with enemy forces often only separated by the breadth of a corridor or wall. Eldar guardians fought bloody battles with vast numbers of termagants, Shuriken fire and flesh borer maggots screeched through the air with equal lethality. 
Eldar Aspect Warriors and Wraith Guard attempted to slice their way through massed swarms of gene stealers and Tyranid warriors that blocked the arterial corridors like a vile cancer. Above carved halls, swooping hawks and gargoyles fought a deadly aerial dance, whilst sleek Eldar Jetfire fighters and bat-winged crones exchanged roles of hunter and prey at breakneck speeds amidst alabaster spires. Carnifexes wrestled with ancient wraith lords as trigons battled towering wraith knights. Graceful phantom titans dueled with grotesque bio-titans, slaying each other over a spore-choked surface. War even ranged beyond the material realm as zoanthropes and warlocks engaged in mighty psychic duels. The Eldar had no place to hide, no sanctuary the Tyranids could not breach, and no warrior or weapon of war that the aliens could not match. Soon, the Eldar's walking dead outnumbered the living. The Eldar warriors sold their lives dearly, extracting a terrible toll in Tyranid corpses. But it was not enough. First, the Fortress of Tears fell. Then, the Shrine of Asurian was destroyed. Most terrible of all, the deeply spiritual Forest of Silence was ravaged by the Tyranid hordes. It is said that many of the Eldar wept tears of rage and sorrow to see the damage inflicted on their precious forest shrine, realizing that they now stood on the brink of extinction. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you do, I will be happy to create a part two for the rest of the story. Please like and tell me below. Thank you.